On this episode of Design Cut Build, Chad wants us to build him a wagon that mounts to his SUV. Leave me alone, stop following me. So let's get ready to design, cut, and build. Welcome to another episode of Design Cut Build. So in this episode, Chad, you might remember him back when we built those kayak racks, asked us to build him a wagon that attaches to the back of his SUV. He also wanted us to call it the bad wagon. What would be better than a good wagon, but a bad wagon? I thought we should have called it the Chad wagon, but he didn't go for that. Iggy and I put our heads together and sketched out a design in the garage. All right, not quite to scale and it's not perfectly square, but that's my thoughts. What do you think? All right, no problem. Your drawing's definitely better than mine would be. It would look like a <laughs> kindergartner if it came from me, but no. I'm pretty sure we can work off of this. We'll definitely go out and take some measurements and stuff off the truck, make sure we're not blocking tail lights and the door can open. Um, other than that... Two inch, right? Yeah, we'll use a two inch receiver for some good stability, and then we'll use some one inch tubing that we have here uh, for the you know rest of the body. Uh, keep it still strong, but more as lightweight as possible. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we'll probably use some like expanded metal or something for the panels. All right, there you go. Let's do this. All right. So Iggy got to work by cutting the square tubing and arranging it on the table to form the bottom of our frame. All right, now all we gotta do is drill a hole in this guy, so that way when we put it in the hitch cover, you can pin it so it doesn't slide out when you drive away. I can see you got all the way through. Before we go any further, I always like to double check to make sure that I didn't put that hole in the wrong spot. Boom, look at that. Perfection. That'll hold some weight. Or a very large bird. We headed back inside to cut some squares to make end caps for our pipe. You don't want any moisture inside that wagon to rust it from the inside out. So what we're gonna do is we'll tack it, Yep. right? Then we'll slide this down, tack it on the other side, and then we can whoop, do a seam weld all the way around. Cool. And we'll weld it clean. With the ends capped off, it was time to start welding the base. Iggy's strengths are more methodical in nature, and mine. Tell me your nightmare. No. <laughs> Put some more weight on the ends. Oh, sh oh, sh yeah, so with the amount of measuring that needed to be done and understanding our respective skill sets, it was best to just let Iggy run wild. I, I think I have to mess with this tape measure next time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Roll that grinder over just a little bit. Wow. That's smooth. Yeah, it really is. So while I finish cleaning up the frame, Iggy starts cutting the Bad Wagon nameplate on the Torchmate 4400. Oh yeah, there's a lot of dross in the back. Yeah, I think our consumables are probably going bad, actually. You're starting to get a little divot on the front side, yeah. and it's starting to eat away to make that yeah. unround. Yep. See that, folks? If you're having cut quality issues and you're pretty sure your parameters are set correctly, it might be time to replace your consumables. They don't last forever, hence the name. We're not gonna throw away our consumables quite yet, though. You'll see a little bit later why. 
good, bad. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Best cat drawing wins. Go. Let's see what you got. So uh, you said there's CAD training available. Now you also notice that this might be a little bowed this way. Oh, that closes the gap easy. Okay, so I'm sure all of you have worked in a shop before where tools tend to disappear. No idea where my square went. So we get to check the angles on our wagon the old fashioned way. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so I'm gonna go three inches here, four inches here, and then when I measure, like a 64th off. There you go. Oh yeah, I like it. It's, it's, it's golden. With every angle on the frame mathematically verified to be a perfect right angle, Iggy gets ready to tack it all together. Check that again by a three, four, five. We're about a 30 second out of square. <laughs> I, think, I think I could live with that. I don't know about you guys. Can you guys at home live with a 30 second? Because I know I can. With the frame in place, it's time to go cut the material for the sides. So you remember when I mentioned earlier about not throwing away those consumables? When you cut expanded metal, you do a lot of air cutting, which is not good for the consumables. So better to use bad ones than spend the money on brand new ones. So it's really interesting to see what Iggy's techniques were on the 4400 for cutting that expanded metal. That thing just cut it like butter. Project moving, I start cutting out the brackets for the wheels and Aaron keeps grinding away. The reason why I'm putting hardware inside these plates and not attaching them to the wheels yet is because we still have to weld these onto our cart itself. So I'm putting these on in the corners since that's where we're going to mount it. So that way the pipe will ride right along here and not impede on the bolt itself from spinning or anything like that. Before we get that far, I'm gonna quickly check back in with Aaron. It looks like he's got all the expanded tacked down and cleaned up and has started on the bad wagon nameplate. All right, so so we want more than just a couple little stitches? We want... Yeah, just do like a, just do a couple of stitches on the ends. One, one there, one there, one there, one there. Okay. Not bad. Not bad? All right. I'm on my phone call. I want my phone call! As I assemble the wheels, Iggy starts cutting out the rectangles to make the handle holders. So this is one of those moments where it would have been just fine to use some square tubing, but we didn't have any of the size we needed here in the shop. So we need a little bit bigger diameter, so we just cut some and made our own. Woo! Go horsey, go! All right, folks, that concludes one more with this bad little wagon. So we designed it, we cut it, and we built it. We'll see you next time. To learn more about Lincoln Electric's line of plasma cutting tables, please visit torchmate.com.